This fall, we heard a lot of dire warnings about supply chain problems leading to a crisis around the holidays. So we acted. A lot of recommendations of the people that you see on the screen here. I wish we were all able to do this in person. We brought together business and labor leaders to solve problems. And much, uh, you know, the much predicted uh, crisis didn't occur. Packages are moving. Gifts are being delivered. Shelves are not empty. So you can see there another struggle from the fake set there next to the White House. Now the supply chain today's priority, the administration trying to change the subject from Omicron. A Texas man has become the first confirmed Omicron related death in the United States. According to the Harris County Public Health Department, the man was between 50 and 60 years old, unvaccinated with underlying health conditions. So we have just one death, but some are pushing the panic pedal to the metal again. The WHO is saying cancel your holiday plans and President Biden says Christmas basically is only for the vaccinated. If you're not fully vaccinated, you have good reason to be concerned. All these people who have not been vaccinated, you have an obligation to yourselves, to your families, and quite frankly, I know I'll get criticized for this to your country. Get vaccinated now. It's free. The president also announcing yesterday that the government will provide 500 million free rapid home testing kits and increase support for hospitals while we continue to deal with this Omicron surge. Now, this testing plan was something that they mocked just a couple of weeks ago. Joining us now is New Jersey Congressman Jeff Van Drew. Congressman, great to have you with us. It's always good to be with you. Thank you. You know, what we saw yesterday, we continue to see this, is the, is the division dividing America into separate groups and not just the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. But really what they're telling us is, you know, they're, they're really pushing for these vaccine mandates and more power. Well, no question about it. They are pushing for, you know, more power, more control. I mean, it is still a decision that an individual makes based on health and based upon their doctor and based upon how they feel on many factors. And, you know, it really isn't their right to diminish or demean people because they just don't agree with their decision. Uh, I've been really disturbed by it. It's an autocratic uh, way of dealing with people. And it's, you know, one thing I catch with the president, it's almost like he's always looking down on those that don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what, Joe Biden? There's a lot of people that don't agree with you, and there's a lot of things you're wrong about. They should be ashamed of the way they've handled a lot of this COVID. Uh, we hear different things every single day virtually. Fauci, I think, is doing a terrible job. You know, job number one, fire Fauci, get a good team of real scientists, not politicians, to really deal with this issue, because we can do better. Yeah, the, uh, Fauci uh, has some culpability here. You know, maybe that will happen if uh, Republicans take back the House or something else can be done about oh, I, that. I think it will We'll happen. see. Uh, something else I wanted to ask you about, too. The Secret Service is reporting that $100 billion has been stolen from COVID relief programs set up to help businesses. Is that something Congress should be investigating? And why don't why aren't you guys talking about that yet? That is a huge waste of money. It, absolutely. It's well, one of the reasons, and, and we are talking about it, because literally every day there's another, and pardon my French, screw up by this president. Every day, every week, there's another issue that comes up. Uh, this is just one more. They don't know how to run things. And it's funny because they want to have more power in our country. They want to run almost every aspect of our economy, of our health, of our future. They can't even do the simplest things, like making sure that nobody's stealing the money that was supposed to go to small businesses to make sure that they survive. Yeah. And it wasn't a few dollars here. Yeah, 100, 100 billion, billion dollars. I remember, and it I'm old enough to remember Congressman. To come and notice it. Yeah, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when 100 billion dollars was enough uh, for a big bill. Like, you know, you could do a lot of stuff with 100 billion dollars once upon a time. Now it's just lost to these thieves, apparently. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Joe Manchin uh, blowing up Build Back Better. It's been really good for his profile and political donations. Insider reporting that Manchin's seen a sharp spike in corporate contributions to his super PAC leading up to his no vote. Uh, basically, he's the fourth branch of government right now. That's why I think this talk of him leaving the Democratic Party for the GOP is nuts. He's got more power uh, than the president when it comes to veto ability. And the president even kind of talked about that yesterday. Here he is. Some people think maybe I'm not an Irish because I don't hold a grudge. 
Look, I want to get things done. I still think there's a possibility of getting the bill back better done. Senator Manchin and I are going to get something done. So he's, he's depending on a, a senator to get something done here. He's the most powerful guy in Washington, isn't he, Joe Manchin? No, without a doubt. He, he certainly has power just because of the real numbers game. And I'm glad he used it, and he used it appropriately. It, it reminds me, you know, it's funny. When he said that he wasn't going to vote for this, that he would vote no, it was two years to the day that I became a Republican. And in a little way, it reminded me of it because, you know, I just couldn't do it anymore. I don't want to be a socialist. I didn't want to be part of the Democratic Party. I didn't want to impeach the president. And I said, no, I wasn't going to do it. I was threatened. I was abused. I was told I had to obey. I know he's gone through the same kind of thing. So I give him credit for having the courage to do what's right. This is a bad bill that will hurt our country forever. And it should not go through the way that it is. In fact, it shouldn't go through it at all. And all I ask of him, two things I ask of him. One, become a Republican. Two, but if you're not, hold tight, hold fast, hold hard, and be strong. And America appreciates you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not a partisan. I don't belong to either political party here. But, you know, you kind of, as an outsider, you look at this and you bemoan the fact that there are not— uh, you know, moderates in either party, or there's no working across the aisle anymore. It seems like the you know loudest voices really get the most attention, or, or you know, or the outliers is, in Joe Manchin's case here. You know, every great accomplishment in this country has been done with with bipartisan kind of agreement here, and we just seem to be getting further and further away from that. And part of that is because of the Democratic Party, I would say, and you know, their push towards socialism. The Democrats used to be against socialism too, but not so sure anymore, are we? You know, you're you're right on point. I mean, the bottom line is to be bipartisan, you need people to work with you. So you can't be given a bill the day before we're going to vote on it and say, this is the bill. We don't really care what you think, because in the House of Representatives, we have the number. That's no way. We should try to join together, at least on some things, and work together for the good of the United States of America and its people. But right now, you can't. Yeah. And it's really difficult because the party has lurched so far to the left, the Democratic Party has lurched so far to the left that it's really people say, well, come together in the middle. But they're so far out to the left that the middle is somewhere still way to the left. And yeah, the middle that's is maybe not a very difficult process. Yeah, I hope it gets better in the future. The middle is not recognizable to middle America, at least in the Democrats' description anymore. And we're seeing that uh, reflected in the poll numbers. Great to see you, Congressman Jeff Andrew from New Jersey. We appreciate it.